Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In our previous video, we discussed how do we read a CSV file in R. In this video, we are going to look into how do we write or export a data uh, from R into a CSV file. So let's just say we imported a data set and now we have performed certain changes into it and we want to export that. So this is what we are, we are going to discuss in this video. As uh, we did in our previous video, we are going to look into a base R uh, function, which is write.csv, and then we are going to look into a, a read R package, which comes from tidyverse uh, set of packages, and uh, the function is write underscore csv. So these two functions are what we are going to discuss in this video. So let's get started. I have this data uh, called example underscore data dot csv file within my working directory and I want to just import it. We know how to import it and we are going to save it into a data frame called data underscore set and we know that there are 500 observations and five different variables. Let's just say we perform certain uh, changes to this data set. Uh, and now, uh, once we are, before I move forward, let me just load this tidyverse package because this, uh, this pipe sign comes from this tidyverse package. So I perform certain changes to this data. What changes do I perform? It doesn't matter. So I'm not going to explain this command, but the idea is that you changed this data or you, you created certain data within R. So whatever the case is, we have a new data set which contains 180 observations and uh, there are five variables in it. Now, uh, this data set is stored within a data frame called single. So this is a data frame and we want to export this data frame uh, onto our hard drive. For that, we are going to use write.csv. So the syntax is that we write the command name, then the name of the data frame that we are going to export and then the name of the file that would store this data. Uh, this would be the new file that would be created, or if it is already created, it would be replaced. Remember to give the file name within inverted commas. So let me execute this command by pressing Control Enter. And if I can show it to you from the Excel file, the data had been exported. But do look at some of the features of this data and this is what we are going to discuss. Firstly, you see this row number. Uh, this wasn't there in our original data that we had over here, but this is coming from the rows. So you do not normally want these row number. Then there is this header or column names. And we can see that there are these missing values that are represented by NA. So let's work with this data. Let's try to improve it. Uh, one more thing is that this is when we, we just tried the file name, it would save this data into our current working directory or whatever the, the, the folder where this, this R file or R script file is present. Uh, or we can change the working directory. If you want to save it in uh, any folder other than the current working directory, then we can mention that path along with the file name, but remember to use double backslash as we did over here, otherwise it would give you an error. So if I saved it in our D folder, so the file would be saved in our D folder. Now, we saw that there were row numbers that we didn't uh, wanted to export. So if we don't want to export the row numbers, then we would use the row.names equal to false. By default, it would be true. So if you do that, the row numbers would not be saved. As you can see, the row numbers had been, uh, had gone. I remember it just replaced the, the same file, right? We don't need, need to mention it to replace the old file. It would just do it by default. Uh, if you want it to export the data without header, that is without the column names, then for that write.csv would not work. We would have to use this write.table, which is also coming from base R. Uh, we would have to specify the separator. So this data would be separated by co commas. 
And if you don't want the row names, then we would specify the row names equal to false and column names equal to false. And if we execute that, the row names would be gone uh, and the data will look like this, right? Okay, uh, we can also append rows to existing file. So for that, we also have to use write.table because in write.csv, neither column names, neither append will work. So we just have to write append equal to true and what it would do, it would, instead of replacing this currently stored file, it would take that file and add uh, additional rows to that, whatever rows we have specified or whatever data frame we have specified over here. Uh, so you saw how the missing values were represented. Uh, they were represented by NA, capital NA. So if we want to change that and let's say we, we want it to replace these any values with a string called missing. Let's say instead of having an A written in the cells, we want missing to be written over there. So what we would do, we would use the any parameter, which would be equal to whatever string we want. So that would be replaced. And you can see that all the any values had been replaced by missing. Uh, or we can uh, keep them empty. So those missing, those any values would not contain any string. They, they would be empty, right? Uh, like this. Okay. Uh, remember that uh, in our previous video, we discussed about read.csv and there was read.csv2 and read.csv2 had a default uh, columns, semicolon separator. Similar goes for the write.csv2. Uh, the write.csv2 uh, is similar to write.csv except that by default it, it would use semicolon as a separator. Let's move towards the second uh, function which is write underscore csv and for that we are going to use re read r package. If you haven't installed it, you would have to install it. Uh, now, how does this work is we write the function name same as we did with write.csv uh, then the data frame that we want to export and then the path or the file name. So by default, it would not write the row name. So let's just export this. So you would see that there are no row name, uh, row numbers as we had previously and then we used this row names equal to false. So by default, it would not export row names. Again, uh, we can use columns name is equal to false. So it would false that would not export the headers. We can also use append equal to true. So it would just append the rows to this current uh, currently saved files. And you can notice that that all is going to be used again with the same command as opposed to write.csv where for column names and for let's just say append, we had to use write.tables. So it makes things somewhat simpler. Again, we, we do have this missing values uh, parameter that we can use n equal to missing or we can use this, um, an empty string. Uh, so that would uh, replace the missing values with an empty string. Uh, so I hope that was useful. useful. Thanks for watching this video. Do subscribe to this channel and do hit the bell icon.